Hey, my reactors. So I'm back with Delilah, woman of the Bible. Her character, a harlot whose nationality is unknown. She used her beauty to betray her lovers and enrich herself. <coughs> her sorrow that Samson lied to her, making her look foolish on three different occasions. Her joy that she overpowered one of history's most powerful men, handing him over to his enemy. Her story, her teeth gleam white in the dusty light as a smile parted lips, soft and smooth as a scarlet ribbon. Earrings glinted gold as she threw back her head and laughed out loud. Fortune has come knocking on her door that day. No lover had ever paid the lot so well as Samson did. The king hated the long-haired, strong man who had set their field of fire and slain a thousand of their countrymen. Each has offered an incredible sum, 1,100 shackles of silver. She had merely to deliver the secret of Samson's strength. He would be to no match for her, a strength born of beauty and schooled in the arts of love. Weakened by passion, he would tell her everything she needed to know. If anyone ties me with seven fresh stones that had not been dried, I'll become as any other man, he replied to her persistence. Robin, hiding, hitting a few kings in a room for good measure. She waited until he slept and then carefully wrapped him with the thorns and exclaimed, Samson the king, are you are upon you? But he had outsmarted her, snapping the cord as he as his enemies fled. Like a man toying with a kitten, Samson repeated the ruse twice, tricking the lion with crazy stories about new ropes and braided hair. Finally, the latter confronted him. How can you say I love you when you won't confide in me? This is the third time you had made a fool of me and hadn't told me the secret of your great strength. Worn down by her nagging, Samson gave in. No razor has ever been used on my head, he decided. Because I had been a Nazareth set apart to God since birth. If my head were shaved, my strength would leave me and I would become as weak as any other man. Years earlier, before his birth, an angel had instructed his mother that he should drink no wine, touch nothing unclean, and never cut his hair. He was to be dedicated to God in a special way, destined to play a great role in God's plans to free his people from their overlords. A strong man unable to subdue his own test woman. Temptatious nature. Samson had barely broke the first two stimulations of the vow. Now he broke the third, preferring the good graces of a woman to the favor of his God. Since she had heard the truth at last, the latter sent word to the, to the enemy. After cutting his head while he slept, she once again called Simon the king are uh, upon you. This time, Simon awoke from his sleep, unable to resist his enemies. He quickly seized him, bulging out his eyes, then they imprisoned him in, in jail, <clears throat> where he spent his days in darkness, performing woman's work, grinding grain. That's the last we hear of the lovely, treacherous, and now wealthy Delilah, but not the last we hear of her lovers. Slowly, Sam. Samson's hair began to grow back, first a short cap to warm his head, and then a cover for his ears. What harm could a blind man do them? The enemy must have reason. One day the enemy held a great celebration in honor of Dagon, god of the harvest, for delivering Samson into their hands. Obviously, to their danger, they brought him out of his prison to make sport of their once mighty enemy. <coughs> but when Samson stood among the pillars of their temples, he prayed, Oh Lord, remember me. Oh God, please strengthen me just one more. 
and let me and let me with me let me and let me with one blow get revenge on the enemy for my two eyes. Then he braced himself against the two central pillars of the temple and push. The roof buckled and collapsed, and Samson and his enemies were buried together under its rubble. By his death, Samson killed more enemies than he had in his life. Just as the angels had predicted, Samson had begun a work of deliverance that David will complete many years later. The strange story of Samson and Delilah is hardly edifying. It's, it's tempting to conclude that the selfish, ill-disciplined Samson had finally met his match and agreed with Delilah. A visitation by an angel, the gift of supernatural strength, a prophet, prophet destiny. Such obvious, such obvious blessing could not assure Samson devotion. Why would God use? Why would God use such a man and enable him to become a judge in Israel? What a what a contrast to Gabriel who had ruled Israel centuries earlier. Perhaps God had little promise and promise and material to choose from. Given the state of his people during the era of Israel history, where everyone did as he saw fit. If anything, the latter role in this sobit still assures us that God will use anything and anyone to accomplish his purpose, even our even our sin, even our enemies. Our deliverance is purely a matter of grace. But how much better if we become people who set apart for his service, who's more, whose inner strength match our outer strength, enabling us to live out our destiny assured of God's pleasure. And I will be back with the next woman out of the